G'day, how you going? Welcome to Bootlosophy. My name is Tech. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I live and work on, the Wajuk people of the Noongar Nation. Now today, I'm going to do an update on uh, three pairs of boots that I bought from Bordon, Colombia. The Tucano and two pairs of the Isidro. Okay, so I'm doing a, an update review of these three pairs of Bordon Columbia boots um, that I bought in the last year or so. Um, the first one is the Bordon Tucano, which I bought the, on the second release of their boots uh, way back in uh, November 2021. So that's some time ago. Um, you can see my review of them and how I've used them in various places out hiking, as you can see, uh, reasonably well used. And then uh, these two pairs of the same boot, which is the uh, Bordon Isidro Chelsea boot, but with different outsoles. One is obviously the Christie wedge sole from Vibram, and this one is a uh, Vibram commander sole as well. Now, these Chelsea boots were bought in the release in uh, uh, 2022. So they're not that long uh, uh, released, but I have used them reasonably extensively around the house and in uh, the summer heat that we've been having when I bought them. I didn't go out much into the bush, uh, but I did wear these on occasion in the Northwest when I went up there for work. So I've used them both reasonably extensively. Now, Bordon, uh, released their boots through a group MTO type model, I, I think three or four times a year, and they probably have got one coming up soon uh, in May, if, they, if they're not announced already. Uh, and um, the way they do it is they uh, announce a batch that they're going to make, you make the order, uh, then they start to produce the boots and send them out. Now first, who are Bordon? I'll put a link to their website down below. But uh, Bordon Colombia was started in 2019 uh, between the co-founders uh, Andres Silva and Natalia Herrera, uh, who are Colombian. They started with a history of making Blake-stitched, uh, dressy kind of shoes made in Europe and then importing them into Colombia. But then in late 2021, they decided to move their production uh, into Colombia uh, because of COVID chain, uh, supply chain issues and so on. And they started their manufacturing uh, using local artisans who uh, handmade their boots. And in fact, in that 2021 period when they moved back into Colombia, uh, they found their artisans who could support them, uh, make these handmade boots and started producing internationally uh, through a group MTO model, uh, their range of uh, lace-up boots, primarily the first one being this jumper style boot, the uh, Tucano, and then uh, balanced with a, uh, a plain toe boot called the Juanes uh, in later releases. Bordon are actually an extremely eco-conscious company using every scrap uh, in their boots or uh, using the scraps in the uh, uh, midsoles and so on, so that nothing goes to waste, or as very little goes to waste as possible. Um, they also make sure that they support local artisans um, and training them, as well as ensuring that uh, the handmade nature of these boots gradually progresses with learning. I like the way that the names of their boots, the Tucano, the Juanes, the Isidro, uh, relies on indigenous names of various tribes in South America. You know what? I love supporting new boot brands, particularly young boot brands that uh, have a passion and a vision and really want to try something different uh, in terms of the handmade nature of boots, the design of the boots, and the eco-conscious social responsibility type of uh, models and values that they hold. So. I hope you'll join with me to support these kinds of new small bootmakers.
So in this update review, let's start by looking at the Bordon Tucano. Uh, as I said, it's a jumper style boot. By that I mean looks kind of like Doc Martin paratrooper-ish, but built much better. I ordered these in November 2021, uh, and I received them uh, in February 2022, which included four weeks shipment at time, because that was bang in the middle of COVID, and shipment to Australia from Bordon involved going almost twice around the world. I have already reviewed this, so you can go check that review, um, where I used them out when I was hiking uh, down in the southwest of Australia, and you can see the sort of dirt in these boots. But let's go through these boots very quickly. Uh, they're made from Italian wax suede, very similar to Charles F. Sweds, uh, Charles F. Stead's waxy commander uh, suede, in that it is a, a, a suede that's waxed over with beeswax to provide a fairly uh, stiff upper's leather, but supportive and natural on your foot. Uh, the stitching quality control is reasonably good. There are some loose stitches. And to some extent, I think, uh, being the, the, the second batch that they ever made uh, that is of a uh, stitch down construction, the first batch they made was, was Blake stitched. Uh, I think it's pretty good for uh, being a handmade boot, um, being the second batch that you've ever made. They used a uh, Montagna Vibram sole, Vibram Montagna sole, where the commando lugs go right to the edge. And in terms of QC, this is one of the things I pointed out to Andres was that the stitching along there is possibly not as good as it could be because they're learning their craft. Because what happens is as the stitches go up and down each lug, they kind of bridge the gap rather than go up and down the gap. Uh, very different from Nick's boots, for example. But other than that, I think the quality control is re really good. The materials are good. Uh, it's all leather construction. There is a steel shank, so you get that arch support from steel. And the internals of the sole construction are cork and leather. Yeah, can't, can't blame that. Uh, the fit is really good. This is a size 41. And it broke in really quite quickly for me, despite it being quite a firm upper's leather and quite a firm veg tan midsole and, and rubber outsole construction. Uh, I wore these on long hikes when I was on holiday uh, a year ago, and they were extremely comfortable, extremely supportive, and they stood up well. Um, I wear them infrequently, but regularly these days. I do find them one of my most comfortable boots. I think that, that last is really perfect for my foot. If you look at that, the heel is actually quite a narrow heel, and then it broadens out. Uh, to the ball of the foot with a rounded toe. Reminds me very much of Parkhurst's 602 last. Now, these two are actually the same boots, but with um, different outsoles. So let me deal with the Commando one first. This is the Isidro boot. Again, I chose a wax suede from an Italian tannery. Um, you can also get these in full grain Wicket and Craig. Uh, particularly if they're offered in the next batch. They have uh, provided them in a green uh, Wicket and Craig, olive green. Um, but I do like the rough out, you know, uh, feel of, of boots like these. Now, Chelsea's, many people would think that they're a lot dressier. But I think you can make a Chelsea that's quite a work boot style. This is... Uh, really well designed to fit the vamp, fit the instep, and then grip you around the ankle so that you're not flipping around uh, because you can't tighten them up without laces. It uses a different Vibram Commandos. Oh, I think this is its hide. Yes, I beg your pardon. It uses a different its hide commander sole. You'll notice that learning from experience, they've got the one, the design where the uh, commando lugs are inboard so that when they sew the uh, stitch down construction onto this sole, they're not having to uh, meet that problem of going up and down lugs. Now that's clever. It's uh, made of leather material, so there's a leather heel stack, leather midsole, uh, and the inside is again uh, cork and leather. Now 
I've worn these for mainly casual occasions. I haven't had much chance to go out hiking in them, even though they fit well enough and snug enough that I don't think I'll be slipping around in them if I go on uneven ground. But I've worn these mainly on uh, casual occasions around uh, going around town. These ones on the Vibram Christi sole, I have worn uh, doing work around the house. I did some uh, intense gardening, <laughs> uh, doing clearing a lot of the, the backyard, which was really overgrown. So there were roots to be dug out. Um, I put in some, uh, some gravel pathways. So there was gravel to be shoveled onto, uh, crawled around. Uh, and it, it's, it's got a few scuffs, much more than the other one. Uh, and I did find that these were incredibly comfortable walking around because of that uh, wedge sole but not fantastic for crawling around because it has this double thickness um, leather midsole as well as this super thick Christie sole so that actually bending the boot even after several months it's not that easy. When I was on my knees instead of bending my toes on my knees I found that I was actually scrabbling around right on the toes. Not ideal as work boots but super, super comfortable. The quality control in these uh, was a little bit amiss. On this boot, that gap between the two midsoles split a little bit. And I, they hadn't come apart, but they were definitely splitting. So I took them to the cobbler who uh, re-glued them back on and pressed them in. Now, I want to touch on the customer service for Bordon. So I contacted Andres and I said, look, I'm getting this done. I just want to let you know. Uh, he asks for feedback so that they can improve. So that's a tick mark. When I contacted him, he was very apologetic, immediately offered me uh, payment for my cobbler, which I didn't bother about, it, 20 Australian dollars, you know. Um, but immediately he started strategizing about how he would make that better in next batches about the formulation of glues, the clamps and so on, and he shared those with me. Now, I think that is really good customer service uh, in the sense that he takes on, he apologizes, and he helps, it gets your help to strategize about what he might do next. That continuous improvement, I think, is something uh, that they should be proud of. So in summary, what do I think of Bodon Colombia? Uh, the pros are quite unique designs and, you know, a jumper boot is a jumper boot, a service boot is a service boot, but I think there's enough character in this to make this quite different. Uh, the design of a work booty Chelsea boot, I think, is also something that's very hard to find in this particular sort of charismatic kind of last and shape and so on. So definitely in the pro side. Is the uniqueness of their design. Um, I think they're very sturdy boots. In all three, I've clambered around, well maybe in two of them anyway, I've clambered around tough terrain on gravel, uh, on sand, in mud. They've really um, kept my foot in really well, kept it really snug and uh, made me feel very comfortable walking around in them. They're also very comfortable uh, in the sense that the uh, leather cork leather combination in the sole helps the mold uh, to your own feet so that after no more than four weeks breaking two weeks constant wear two weeks of on and off wear your feet really feel molded inside and i would easily slip in these into these every time i walked out the door in fact these are kept in my uh, back door so that if i'm on uh, stocking feet as i go out for something i'll put these on so comfortable they're not as comfortable as bedroom slippers, which some people might say. They're not as comfortable as sneakers. These are boots, but as boots, they're very comfortable. As for the con side, yeah, there was that problem with the, with the, uh, the uh, midsole sort of slipping away from each other. Uh, yeah, there was a problem with a little uh, a loose stitching, which I just burned off, you know, that's, that's nothing much really. Um, I think you have to remember that these are handmade boots. And in Bordon, they're actually literally handmade. They're hand-lasted. There's no machine that sort of sucks it into a mold. Um, 
a person guides a sewing machine through this so yeah it's not that even but you know i like that i can see that it's handmade that a person has made these so unless they fall apart which they don't i really like that quirky not quite perfect look customer service is definitely on the plus side easy to contact easy to talk to they engage with you and they'll fix things very quickly no problems there at all so it's my personal preference but one of the things i really like to do is look for these small batch boot makers and i like to try and support them uh, now they're small batch and they're small batch and thursday love them as much as i love thursday boots for an entry-level boot they make them in small batches but they're getting pretty big <laughs> right Whereas um, people like Bordon Columbia, people like Parkhurst still make boots in really small batches as and when they buy in the skins and the hides. And I think we really need to try and uh, use their skills, help them grow and support that industry in um, the sort of boot world that we all love. So I hope you like that little update on the Bordon Columbia. Keep an eye out on their website and I'll put a link below so that you can uh, have a look. They are going to bring out a batch pretty soon, I think, um, if not already, when I record this. Uh, but check it out and uh, uh, give them a go. Look, until then, guys, you take care. And don't forget to click on like and subscribe. And I'll see you soon.